Hi everyone, I'm Jolene, and on my channel, Witness for Yeshua Mashiach, I do share various things. I talk about various things. Today, I have a particular video in mind for you that is a little bit um, different than what I usually would put, but it's related to spiritual matters. I have something to show you that you really ought to know. You should know this. Like, you deserve to know the truth about something. And <clears throat> I hope that you'll receive this information because it's good for you to know. It's good for you to know the truth about something I have to show you. So bear with me. I'll do my best. And let's get this video started. All right, everyone, <clears throat> please excuse like, how I have my hair all piled up on one side. It's so that it doesn't rub all over the mic, okay? I'm not trying to store a lopsided hair fat or anything. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to pull out the board. Some of y'all love that, <laughs> but <laughs> okay, so I have something to show you, and it's very important, and it's been going on for a long time. There's a scam going on. Now, some of you have heard about the 501c3 churches. You know, the five. Some of you have heard of it, and some of you know all full well what's going on, but you might not have connected it to something big that you should know. It's, there's some, I'm going to connect some dots for you, okay? If you haven't done it already, just in case. And then there's plenty of you, too many of you, so precious, so precious. You don't know what's going on yet about this and you should know it. So, let me show you. Ah, gotta show you some stuff. What I have to show you is disturbing. Listen carefully. As soon as I show you the first level that is disturbing, you might think I'm done, but I'm not. The depth of how bad this is goes deeper. Like I said, I will connect some dots here, and I think it's about time someone openly discusses this. People will hate my guts for revealing this, but I'm not here to be friends with the world. I'm here to be a witness for Jesus, Yeshua, the Mashiach, the Mishiach, and to help his precious flock, my brothers and sisters whom I love. These 501c3 churches, when a pastor or a preacher opens up a church, the majority of them, not all of them, the majority of them, they are hungry for money. They, they're starting to, to them. This is a business. They want money. Okay. So what they do is they enter into contract covenant. With the beast. By signing over into this covenant and that's why they're 501 c3 churches and so why does a pastor do this because when you give money or anyone else for that matter They want you to give money, and most people won't give money unless they can get it back. When they file their taxes at the end of the year to the beast, the beast refunds them all that money back. The church, most of them, truly, are open only to make money. They see people as heads, as money. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Give me that money. So what happens is these places are their businesses, their corporations. When you become a 501c3, you remove yourself from under the headship of Jesus Christ, the ecclesiastical power of Jesus Christ. And instead go underneath the umbrella of the beast. 
and therefore the beast exerts authority over the little little baby corporation it becomes a limb of the beast it's working in compliance with the beast it is providing a service that services the beast well again here's something you need to understand in case you don't when a person donates say three hundred dollars loans three hundred dollars to the church their church the corporation and say next month they loan they give thirty th loan thirty dollars and blah 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 th throughout the year you know at the end of the year when they file their taxes they get a receipt from their 501c3 corporation and then the beast will pay all that money back to these people they get all that money back do you understand so in essence in reality the beast is funding these churches now the holy scriptures of god talks about the beast how um the beast will overcome the saints it's in, it's in revelation Revelation 13, 7 through 8. Then the beast was permitted to wage war against the saints. War against the saints from the beast. And to conquer them. This is what's happening, my precious brothers and sisters. And it was given, the beast was given authority over every tribe and people and tongue and nation. And all who dwell on the earth will worship the beast. All whose names have not been found from the foundation of the world in the book of life belonging to the Lamb who was slain. So, if we read the Word of God, right here it says that the beast is given permission to wage war against the saints and to conquer them. This applies later after the rapture for those who are left behind. They become the tribulation saints and how the beast goes all all against them in war and puts them to death but it's also we're in this war now it's a soft war a silent war where the beast is first usurping the authority getting the authority gaining the upper hand over every tribe and people and tongue and nation you see the beast right here it it and it was given authority over every tribe I'm telling you so the Word of God right here let's take it serious it says all okay so the most of the world is on the broad and spacious path that leads off into destruction it's only few who get on the cramped and narrow path of truth that leads to everlasting life and so in truth, there are several scriptures talking about this. I just have one up here, okay? So, there's only one right here that I'm using to show you some of these truths here. There are many scriptures that talk about this in great detail. Basically, the beast takes over and usurps true worship and profanes it, turns the churches into worldly churches of death, houses of the dead, not in the correct standing of God, you see, because if they're if they're doing what the world loves in union covenant contract with the beast it's a house of the dead it's not a, a, an appropriate place to go and worship the Almighty Holy Father and praise and and pray in the name of Jesus Yeshua the Messiah so a lot of people don't see how the Word of God is coming true or take it seriously and realize I have some very interesting things to show you in this and video. No one will be able to defeat the beast. Who can overcome the beast? Who is more powerful than the beast? The beast has been funding these churches for a long time now. Now, ask yourself this question. Why would Lucifer's beast? Because the beast is the lap dog of Lucifer. It serves Lucifer and the whore, Babylon, all that. Why would the beast fund and finance financially fund these churches why would the beast set this system up like this think about it because these churches they're not real churches they have no ecclesiastical power they've removed themselves from underneath jesus by signing covenant contract to the beast you see a contract a 501c3 that's a contract when they're licensed under the beast a, a contract is a covenant. A covenant is a contract.
when you sign you're an agreement you've signed an agreement that's a covenant that's a contract regarding covenants and contracts have you ever heard about how people sign their souls over to the devil you've heard about that right well Hollywood likes to portray signing your soul to the devil and signing a contract with the devil, entering into covenant with the devil. Hollywood likes to portray this as though there's fire everywhere. You have to sign your name in blood and blood. And there has to be some kind of sacrifice. And there's demons all over. And Hollywood tries to portray it that way. We know Hollywood is, is absolutely under the authority and power of Satan. It's Hollywood, right? So Hollywood would like us and would have it that we would think that a contract or a covenant with Satan, basically, the beast, he uses the beast, that it would be something like that, signing in blood and no. In this is all to get us to not see and be, not be able to recognize the real life covenant contracts that the beast pushes and that many enter into. It's just on paper. Okay, so I, I'm pointing this out for a good reason. If you hang on, I'm going to show you. There's something you, you, you need to see. If you don't see it, I want you to know. Why would the church do that? Because they want money. They want that money. Honey, they want that money. Okay? You better know. It's all about the money, baby. I'm just saying. Now, not every preacher, or not every teacher, not every pastor has sold out to the, for, to the beast, to the devil, for the love of money. But the majority of churches are absolutely businesses they're out to make money off of you they've turned the word of god into merchandise how do they do that they use the word of god to get you to come in come here for the word of god they barely teach you anything and they teach they you know what they teach they teach the lukewarm one size fits all once saved always saved fantasy gospel and that's what they teach and that's why the beast pays for them to do this the beast will refund all the money that everyone's given to loaned to the church at the end of the year when when people when they they've given money to their churches they file in their taxes they show how much they've given the beast will refund them all their money back so they didn't have to lose any money at all why does think ask yourself why does the beast pay for these churches because they provide a valuable service to Lucifer here's what I'm getting at why does the beast pay for these churches the beast under Satan pays big money and doesn't even make them pay taxes and finally financially supports these churches businesses because these churches teach a lukewarm sugar-coated version of the gospel which promotes living in willful sin. The beast loves that. These churches teach once saved, always saved. These churches teach and promote trampling on the blood of Jesus. These churches teach a different Jesus. These churches hide the scriptures that shows us that we are to be overcomers of sin. Instead, these churches teach that we are sinners and that we can't help but sin. The real Messiah teaches that we are to overcome sin, be spotless, wrinkle-free, wrinkle holy like our Father in heaven is holy. The real Messiah teaches that we have the Helper, the Holy Spirit, in us, and that we are to be working in union with the Holy Spirit together to overcome sin and live clean and holy lives. We are to be bearing fruit to the Lord for the building of his coming kingdom by living in his light, pleasing him and sharing the gospel. These lukewarm churches don't even address masturbation or adulterous marriages or possession barely. Few do these things. These government beast sanctioned churches, government sanctioned churches support living in willful sin, pagan holidays, necromancy, Halloween, idol worship, worship of the beast, patriotism, and war. 
These churches teach the abundance manifestation law of attraction gospel and treat Jesus, Yeshua, as though he is our servant. When we, we're truly, the truth is we're, we're the servants of the Lord, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. These things I'm telling you are only the tip of the iceberg of what's wrong with these churches. And this is why the beast funds these businesses. Do you understand? This is why. Because broad and spacious is the path that leads off into destruction. Cramped and narrow, difficult is the way that leads off into everlasting life. And only few are finding that way. These churches are loved by the world. They're accepted by the beast. He, the, the beast that serves Lucifer, that the whore of Babylon rides, loves these churches so much they don't even tax them. You know what taxes are? Taxes are tithes. It's an act of worship to pay taxes. And whoever it is you're paying taxes to, that's who you are worshiping. This is how the Israelites were made to worship God, you see. Whoever, you know, obeyed God, they paid 10% of their excess abundance to God as an act of worship and obedience. Anyone who pays taxes, is, they're paying tithes to Baal, which is another name for Lucifer. So, you have to see, some of you don't know, I'm just trying to share this with you. We're only saved in Jesus Christ by getting His Holy Spirit that is completely free. You do not have to earn salvation. The thing is, is after you get the Holy Spirit, you are to be working out your salvation, getting rid of demons, getting rid of addictions, getting rid of things that, that grieve the Holy Spirit, that bother the Holy Spirit in you and make you feel guilt before God, getting rid of old habits, things you used to do, the way you, you know, cursed before and different, you know, get get you know clean the holy spirit will convict you and you're supposed to get rid of certain things and get cleansed and get refined the bride is being refined but these churches do not help the bride get refined in fact impede the refining process these churches these businesses these corporations under lucifer do nothing for getting the bride ready you see so i'm here i'm supposed to be helping the bride and i want you to understand what's going on with these 501c3 churches and know that none of nothing of what 90 percent of them are teaching is going to get you ready just like any bride has to get ready get bathed up and and all nice and clean or hair done we have to get ready in the spirit and none of these places do that for the church for the bride of christ get out of them they're of the world from the world by the beast they're only going to give you candy very very little they're not going to address these places do not address the serious problems that we have they the beast has been given the authority and the power to wage war against us and to overcome us so slowly and gradually the beast has stepped in and has used money the love of money and the gr the the greed and the lusts of these people who start these churches to get in to lawfully get in and get authority over these churches and so the beast muzzles the real Holy Spirit filled pastors and teachers and preachers on what they can say and what they can teach you see so I have to share this with you then let me just go ahead and get back to the video okay I'm sorry it's terrible but it's true just be I'm just come on now a lot of these people they a lot of them they're only in it for the money. They don't love you. They're not taking care of the flock, because serving the flock and helping the fl loving the flock and telling them the truth. Why? Because they love money. I'm going to get more into that. It's going to explain a lot. Hold on. They don't love you. The majority of them. You know, they do. A lot of them go to school, some kind of Bible college, and they don't even believe in God. So that they can run a business. They set up a business, kind of like a franchise. You know how you can set up a McDonald's, go to a, a McDonald's college so you can learn how to make McDonald's burgers and stuff. It's all to make money. A lot of them go to school. They don't even believe in God. They learn the Bible and they don't, a lot of them don't even believe in God. Now, some of them do and they're precious. They're so precious. And some of them believe in God truly. And then they, they don't know because they're ignorant. It's just, I'm not being insulting. Ignorant means you just don't know better. 
and so they just they just go with the flow they never ask questions they sign this stuff right here but they're still guilty of something though when they they know when they sign this agreement this contract with the devil with the beast that this beast now they have to dance to the rules of the beast and do what the beast says they only can preach what the beast allows them to preach the way the beast allows them to preach they can't say certain things certain truths they can't teach you the, the actual truth so the gospel with these places gets watered down it gets lukewarm baby I'm just telling you and that is the thing the beast wants control the, Lucifer has been trying to infiltrate the churches of God for a long time and he's achieved it the beast has gained the power the beast has snuck in so before the beast snuck in churches were held at homes even back in Jesus day people sincerely gave to one another and made sacrifice in giving to one another out of real love people sang from their hearts in more of a private sincere love with one another in their homes with each other people laid hands on one another praying for each other rebuking demons and manifest they manifested the Holy Spirit gifts and shared their beautiful experiences with the Lord and edified one another they built up each other's faith as well and they read the Holy Word of God to one another and they would gather together and purge out sin and filth and counsel one another. And they would even rebuke one another if somebody was doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. They knew one another very well and grew to deeply love one another. They became true family, bonded by the blood of Jesus. Today it's all about dressing up, making sure you represent your status, your sexual appeal, your wealth. It's all about abundance, showy displays of money and power. It's all about what God can do for you, like the Lord is some, some sort of lowly servant at our feet. At these false churches, today there is no real heart. There's no real repentance. There's no repentance in most of these places. There's no humility. There's no, no allowance for the active power of the Holy Spirit to come in and cast out demons. There's no real reproving at all. Nothing but pillow talk and candy and the, the, water the watering down of the Word of God. There's no real counsel either. Nothing, nothing. And barely anyone really knows anyone. And if you can barely know the people, because the churches are so large and crazy, how are you going to really love one another? It's a show. A false display of love. And it's even a downright circus at many of these de facto churches. Run. Just run. Do you hear me? Run. Run to Jesus. You, you do not have to, go, to do what the world does to be close to the Lord. You must flee the world and run to Him and Him alone. And if I was a false teacher or anybody false, just not somebody to be afraid of, I wouldn't be telling you to go to Jesus. That's one thing you need to really consider if, if, you don't, if you don't know. If you listen to someone, anyone, me or anyone, and if that person never tells you to go to Jesus, they, they try to you know, glorify themselves, oh they're special, they're trying to create followers after them, for them. But when you have someone telling you, please go to Jesus, go to Jesus, and no one else. That person is for Jesus. These places try to create followers after them. They act like they have the access to God, like they themselves or Jesus. That's what he meant when the Lord said, Many false Christs will come in my name. They'll be coming in his, his name, his authority, his power, trying to act like they're the only way to God. And so they push and push and push come to the church come to the services oh you missed church and you're not you, di you didn't come last week they push 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 they say if you want to be closer to God you have to start coming to our services you don't have to do any of that you don't need to go nowhere many of you don't know that really like really really know that some of you do I'm saying this for the sakes of those precious ones of you who don't know you don't have to go anywhere be with your precious brothers and sisters, fellow believers. Don't forsake one another. Be close.
pray with each other. Talk about the Lord and what you've experienced, what the Holy Spirit has shown you, what the Holy Spirit has done for you. Share the word and sing and worship and praise Him and repent and help each other. Call each other up and be supportive to one another. Be there for one another. This is love, the love of Jesus. The beast uses these churches to control the people. To get them to um, obey every little thing the beast wants to do and to be obedient and oh yeah and it's all because these pastors they sign this because they love money why because if your church is a 501c3 church that means ooh, these pastors know if their church is 501c3 people will more willingly give over bigger amounts of money more frequently because that the people know they can get it all back the beast they can ask the beast give me my money back please at the end of the year when they file their tithes to bail taxes I'm just saying so these churches these pastors who signed this they sign it so that people will give them more money they give up Jesus Christ the authority the ecclesiastical authority of Jesus Christ and they go underneath the umbrella of the beast for money and so now let's get into some more stuff here <clears throat> turns out eventually these churches they realize these pastors and stuff they realize that well their income depends on how much you're willing to give them they don't get a set standard, a certain amount of solid income every month. It's based on only what you give them, right? So if they only have 10 people in their church, they're only going to get, you know, a little bit of money. Next thing that becomes the goal of these de facto churches, businesses, is to get more people to come. The more people that come, the more money they donate. They not donate, loan to the church. Ooh, baby, get that money. Woo! We can have a party. That's what they do. Let's throw parties. Let's get all kinds of wild, amazing, and let's make them happy. Come over here and get high, happy on the lukewarm, false fantasy gospel. We'll tickle your ear. You don't want sound doctrine anymore. People don't want that. They don't want to go to church and get reproved anymore. You don't want to get go to church. People don't want to go to church and get told about how bad their sins are and how they have to straighten out their lives and obey God and do right and glorify him and be living walking witnesses of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ they don't want to people don't want to hear that they don't want to hear anything that reproves them when you fuss somebody or reprove basically when you correct them or even if it's done lovingly they don't want to hear it they are turning their ears to, to tickling words and not not accepting any sound doctrine anymore so these people these businesses they know that so what they do is they offer candy a sweet talk a sweet a sweet sugared version of the gospel to get you to come they put on big shows you like music singing strobing lights like a circus okay this becomes a playground Ooh, let's have a party free food and do cookouts and all kinds of stuff together let's do Halloween oh baby Let's let's bring in you know cult garbage, satanic stuff that glorifies death and necromancy, <clears throat> and all this uh, murderous Halloween filth. Let's let's it starts getting watered down to garbage, all because the pastors of these churches love money. I'm sorry, but it's true. I want you to understand. I hope you do. I hope you realize what's happening here. Now there is a broad way that leads off into destruction and many are upon that road and then there's the cramped and narrow path that leads off into everlasting everlasting life and it's few are finding it you think you're gonna find it at these 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 massive churches of the world that the world loves you see the Holy Word of God says that if you love me you'll be no part of this world if the world loves you you're an enemy of God you can't be with God and have the world love you 
the world is under the power of the wicked one, Lucifer. And this beast system he set up, it's, you know what it is. You follow your income taxes to it. You pay your taxes to it. It controls everything. It owns everything. Your homes, your cars, your children, everything. It's the beast. It didn't start out that way. It started out like a, like a virgin, like, like a, it started out serving God and upholding the, the holy word of God. But it's been usurped, corrupted, Satan got in. Oh, yes. And so we're not underneath the original common law anymore. We're not underneath the law of God anymore with this system. It's all been usurped. I'm not going to get into that right now, but just... So, the beast is making people to contract if they want money. You don't have to become a 501c3 corporation. You know what corporation is? It's an animated corpse. Corporation, animation, animated corpse. A moving dead body, a walking dead, a zombie, the sleepwalking. The sl it's, 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 it's life to something that is dead. When you become a corporation, you're, you've joined in bondage, covenant, contract with something that is dead. That's not real. That's not, that's not living. Almighty Holy Father is the living God. You don't, these people, they don't have to sign into that garbage. And you don't have to go to that, the 501c3 churches. Listen, the only reason, listen, ask yourself, why does the beast pay so much money? And they don't even tax these places. You hear? Because these people, without, many of them know it, they do. But some of them don't. They're acting as priests for Baal. For, for Baal for the beast lucifer do you understand i'm telling you i know it's terrible it's a perversion of the word they don't give you the real truth they give you the watered down version of the gospel where you, they teach you know you pray a prayer on a card and i love jesus and sing music and party and people are the precious 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 people that go over there they love the lord lots of them really do love the lord and they're, they, they're not being taught the truth. Mm -mm. They're being taught, just believe in Jesus and you're saved. Just call the name. They're teaching a different Messiah. They're not teaching the true, the true Yeshua, Jesus Christ. They're not teaching the truth. And that is why the beast pays for them. Listen here now. I'm just saying, if these churches were teaching the truth and people would really be getting saved, you'd be seeing some real stuff in the Holy Spirit. Oh, man. And the beast would never pay for it. The beast would have done cut that off a long time ago. But because the beast usurp people through the love of money, through they're drawn out and enticed by their greed, by their lusts, and by their love of money. Oh, and the Holy Word of God, he warns these people who do this and who don't care for the flock. They've made the flock into merchandise and the word of God into merchandise. Remember what Jesus did when he went in the temple with his righteous anger and tore it up? Because the, the people there, they turned the temple of God into a place of merchandise. He called it a, the a den of thieves. Okay? Um, they were whoring out. <clears throat> they, were, they were turning. Listen. For the forgiveness of their sins, because... The wages of sin is death. So the blood of an animal would pay for their sin for that year. Understand? So they didn't have to die. And that way their prayers can be heard. They'll be forgiven of sin. They've paid for sin. And so in order to comply with God's laws given through Moses, the Levitical laws, they had to sacrifice, pay in blood. Not their own blood. God allowed. He accepted the blood of animals for a time so that they didn't have to die to pay for their sins immediately. Because blood is life force energy. The life is in the blood. It is spirit currency. Do you understand? Just like we have physical currency. Garbage monopolies is not even real currency anymore. It's garbage. But just like we have real currency here in the physical realm, there is spirit currency.
Everything is a mirror image, okay? Just like we have law down here. Oh, there's law in heaven and the spirit. There's spiritual law, spirit law. So everything is a mirror image on earth as it is in heaven. This is biblical where I'm telling you. So what, what they did in the temple, they were cheating people with the scales and, and basically ripping them off. But what really, 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 I mean, that was bad enough. But what really got, got to Jesus, Yeshua, was how they were bringing all the supplies, all the doves and you name it, animals, lambs and whatnot to the temple and selling some that were cheaper with blemishes and stuff to people and making profit off of their sin. They found a way to make profit off of the... Re God requires that the animals be sacrificed so that you can have a relationship with him at that time. And they found a way to use the requirements of God as a way to make money off of God's requirements, off of his allotment for forgiveness. They made merchandise. They, made, they used God's forgiveness, the method God gave man at that time to obtain salvation and forgiveness. They turned that into a way to make money off of God's, God's forgiveness. The Catholic Church did it too with paying money for sins and whatnot. <clears throat> oh yeah. So gee, that I mean, I'm sorry, I peeved Jesus off really bad. It miffed him off. In the righteous anger of God, he tore it up. Well, what do you think these people are doing, man? They're taking the word of God, the Holy Bible, the Word of God. And they're turning it into merchandise. They're using it as bait to get you to come in. So, and, and if they can make you feel happy and have a great time and feel like you're, you're, you know, you're good with God and you're a great person, if they can tickle you and please you and entertain you, you'll want to come back and you'll keep giving money. Okay. I'm just saying, I have got to tell you this. This is so important. So. You're not going to get any reproof from these people. I will tell you something right now, and I love you. I love you, and I'm going to tell you. The, I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, I don't know all the truth. There's a lot of stuff I do not know. I don't know everything. I'm not going to sit here and pretend I do. That's crazy. That'd be wrong of me. That'd be actually, that'd be satanic to act like I know everything because I don't know everything. But I'll tell you what I know. Okay, and some of you are gonna know you're gonna know more than I do about this, and I could learn from you, and that'd be awesome. That'd be so awesome. But I will say this: that a lot of people will watch my videos, they'll click on it, and then because I tell the truth of some of the truth that I know, I don't know all the truth, but because what I'm saying, it shows them some of their sin and stuff and how it's not acceptable by Holy Father. It's not okay to continue to live in willful sin. That we're, we're called to reprove ourselves and to not be reprobates and to not trample on the blood of Jesus. And we're, we're told and called in various ports of the Holy Word of God to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, not because the work makes us saved. That's crazy. But because once we get the Holy Spirit salvation, which is a free gift, not by works, we must then begin to work out our salvation. Just like how you prune, um, how you, how you will actually till the soil and get it ready so you can plant seed. So it, your, your, your seed can grow and you'll protect it from animals and whatnot. You have to, you have to work out your salvation, get demons out of you. Um, get 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 out of addictions that glorify Lucifer and keep you carnal in the flesh and a servant to the beast, to the flesh. You have to get you have to work out your salvation. Clean up. The bride has to be spotless, without blemish. The children of God have to be innocent and and um, without being servants of Lucifer. You make Jesus your Lord, not Lucifer in the flesh and the pleasures of the flesh. People don't want to hear that. So here's the thing. I do this. I'm going to show you something. Whenever I, I click on someone's stuff, any pastor, any teacher, anybody, 
if I don't get reproof from them, if they're not reproving me and making me to see where I'm messing up and how I'm doing wrong, if I don't get any of that from them and, oh, I, and I come out of that stuff feeling amazing and empowered, like I'm, I'm it. If I come out of listening to that stuff, whatever they have to say, feeling great about myself and I'm so great, I don't, I don't pay attention to them anymore. Because listen, it says in the Holy Word of God, and it's true, that the Lord reproves His children. Just like I'm a mother. Um, I'm not going to let my children do all kind of bad stuff and just praise them the whole time. I'm going to reprove them. I love them. I don't hate my children. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Those who are sparing the rod are hating their children. That's the Word of God. So, with me, when you listen to me what, with, with what I have to say, because the Holy Spirit presence is in me, I am saved. I'm in the Lord. All of you watching, my brothers and sisters, I know you are too. And that's probably why you're watching. And hopefully, um, if you're watching and you're not saved, I hope you do get saved. Absolutely come to Jesus. He is the only way out of this mess to go and have the real life. But when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you're going you're gonna, to uh, reprove each other in love. Be there for each other. Admonish each other. Support each other to, to pray, to overcome sin, the, the, the guiles of Lucifer. You're going you're gonna to feel reproof. If you got a message, if you watch a video from someone and you feel reproved and you feel okay, you know, just like when you read the Holy Word of God and it reads you and man, it humbles you because uh, you see how you're doing wrong right here and how God feels about that. And you put that Bible down and you know you just got taught some, some lessons. <laughs> That's what the Holy Spirit does. So I know when I, I watch someone's video and if they have the Holy Spirit or not, because I'm going to feel reproved. I'm going to be shown some aspects of myself I need to work on in the Lord, you see, always. But if I don't get any reproof and I just walk out there feeling like I'm great the way I am, mm-hmm. I didn't get the Word of God out of there. They did not have the Holy Spirit presence, and they did not correct me. Mm -mm, that, no. I know what I'm saying is going to offend people because it's going to strike a nerve. It's going to trigger some people because some they're going to realize what's true and not like it and click right off. And truth is not for these people. Okay, it's, I'm just saying it's not for everybody. Even the Word of God says it's not for everybody. Many go off onto destruction, and few go for the truth into the cramped and narrow path. Now, the beast, the beast churches, they sell a false sense of security that will have many, many hearing from the Lord to get away from Him. For Jesus will say. To these people, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, that to get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. Now, what is lawlessness? To be lawless is to be without God, for God is the law, the standard. What he says goes, right? To be lawless means to be in sin. Sin is breaking the law, breaking the law of God, going against God. Living in willful sin, excuse me, living in willful sin, choosing to stay in sin, to t choosing sin over salvation. He says to be, to be wise. So Satan wants this for you, you see, okay, to be cast out like him, because he is the lawless one. Okay, so there's and lots in the Bible describing, lots of scriptures describing how there's children of sin, children of wrath, and there's children of God. How there's the wheats and the tares, and there's sheeps and the goats. And To be lawless means to be living in sin, willful sin, knowing better but continuing in sin. And that's what Satan wants. That's why he, that's hence why he financially, through the beast, supports these false churches. Many of them are false. They're just going to comfort you and give you a sense of false security and sin. And and you won't be admonished, shown, and humbled and reproved through the Holy Spirit power. The Holy Spirit power is limited underneath these these businesses, these corporations, these corporate churches of the beast, because they've signed over and contract covenant to the beast, and the beast has the authority over them. They've given authority to the beast. 
The beast has authority over these churches, unfortunately. So flee them. Flee. Go to Jesus. Flee to Jesus. The time is short. Get ready. The bride has to get ready. Precious babies, my brothers, my sisters, I love you. Jesus loves you. And I know I look crazy to people. I absolutely look crazy to the world. Because I care. And I, I'm not trying to be uh, mysterious and sexy and and uh, attractive. And I throw all that out the window, man. I'm talking to you from the heart. No ego. I'm being me. The real me with the Holy Spirit. And I feel this urgency in the Spirit of God to tell you the truth. To show you what I'm being shown by the Holy Spirit. I'm not the only one. And get ready. See things how they really are. And realize that Jesus is the only way. He is the exit door. He is the door. And you've got to do things His way. And read the Word. He says He'll take away from you your, your candlestick if you do not repent. Type it up. Candlestick. Google it. Jesus says he'll take your candlestick if you don't repent. And type it up and you'll see the scriptures. Start looking at the real word of God. You can lose your salvation if you stay in, in willful sin. Choosing the lusts of the flesh and carnality. That's under Lucifer. Rather than salvation and being clean. Clean of your sins. Don't trample on the blood of Jesus. Don't continue to live in willful sin. Living, living your life as a living testimony to how you prefer Satan's way. Choose Jesus. <laughs> you can overcome it. You absolutely can overcome it. You can absolutely because most sins that we're doing, like like addictions or whatnot, that's under compulsion. It's demonic. The majority of it. You can get released from that. So many people have, but it doesn't stop there. You've got to you've got to live clean. Stay away from things that glorify the devil. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And absolutely walk with the Lord. And help build His kingdom. You're going to be motivated and moved by love if you aren't already. Because most of you are. You're going to be motivated and moved by love to build His kingdom. To talk to others about the Lord. You'll be His, you'll be his precious child in obedience. And you won't be accused of being a, a lawless one. And, and cast out by Him. You see, that's what happens to those who live in willful sin. Jesus is going to tell them when they say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Expelled many demons in your name and did many works in your name? Jesus will say, I tell you truly, get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. These are the ones that will be cast out and left behind. And that's no good. People who don't want to hear the truth, they're going to be, they're going to have to learn the hard way. They're going to have to die, as taste death, as tribulation saints, if they even have the faith to do it. They're in some serious danger. But you, precious ones, if you've been humble enough to listen to my other videos, you definitely, definitely are being called to a station, a precious, one of the precious few that gets in with the Lord. He died for you. And so, I hope you're humble enough to least understand some of what I'm saying you don't have to agree with me I don't require that I just want to let you know to be aware of it and if you agree with 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 what the Holy Spirit showed me please do share this video we got to get it out this is an expose on the beast system and what he's done to the churches over here and people need to know we don't have a lot of time people need to know need to wake up and get ready, get filled with the Holy Spirit oil, and get physically prepared as well with food and water. That is what the wise virgins do. So time is short. Let's get moving. Now, that's what these churches are. You're not going to get the, you're not going to get the, the Holy Spirit reproof and love from your loving Father from the majority, at least ninety percent of these places. Now, don't get me wrong. Listen. I'm not saying that all these pastors and teachers are no good. I'm not saying that. There's plenty of them that are wonderful and they truly love you. They really do. But they, they did sign that 501c3. If they signed this 501c to the 3, they do love money. And they want the money. 
and they didn't have to do that because people people are willing to give to their precious pastors and teachers and stuff and not get it back but they want you to give more and they want everybody to come in and give and get more people to come in and give more because they know that they'll get it back you're likely to give more if you know you're going to get it back so it ends up being a loan so it ends up being the love of money and I'm not saying that everybody that goes to these churches aren't saved that would be a lie I'm not fixing to say that that would be crazy there's plenty of people that go to these churches and they are saved absolutely saved you see Satan does bad things and we know that Holy Father is almighty and he can use the bad things Satan does and turn it around on Satan to do something good for the Lord to serve him he can turn bad situations into something he can make it work out in the long run for the good for the good of the body of Christ so there's plenty of people not a whole lot but there is people that go to these churches say say I would say honestly I'm, and this is just an idea a ball I think about 40% of them are sincerely truly after the heart of God and truly 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 really love Jesus there's a lot of people that go to these churches they they are they're not making Jesus Lord of their lives instead they're taught that Jesus is their servant they only go to Jesus for prayer like he's some some kind of um, some kind of genie or something to grant wishes okay and uh, brother Ray comfort says it like this they look to Jesus like he's some kind of cosmic Santa Claus and so they don't make him their Lord they seek to be lords of their own lives, do their own will every day. They pursue their own pleasures, their own passions. They don't do a thing to help build the kingdom of, of, the, of the, the coming kingdom of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. They just, they want to build their own businesses, their own corporations, make their own money, live the, their own pleasures right now, and whatever help they need, they pray and ask for favors while being enemies of the of the messiah because they're not working on their sin they're not rebuking demons they're not praying for others they're not a lot of them aren't doing these things and they're not teaching the truth they're not a part of the truth they're not seeking what pleases holy father they're not trying to please him like a, a child a loving child would try to please their parents they're all about pleasing themselves a lot of them not all of them but a lot of them and so the majority of them it's worse than what I'm saying it's worse the majority of them are in the lukewarm gospel that doesn't teach the truth they believe there's they have it's like the lukewarm gospel the fantasy gospel here it's a one-size-fits-all gospel and they teach that once you got saved you're always saved and so basically what they're saying without saying it they're saying you have a license to sin to keep on living in sin. Eh, Jesus got me. Eh, I go commit adultery against my wife or my husband and eh, no worries. I'll just, I'll repent later. Jesus understands. That's Jesus, Jesus will forgive me. Ah, that's trampling on the blood of Jesus. That's living your life willfully living in sin, choosing to sin. And not glorify the Lord, but glorify the adversary, because the adversary is all about flesh. Lucifer, Satan, he charged Joseph, uh, Job, Job, that Job is only good to God because God blesses him and gives him good for his pleasure. Abundance. Satan said that if you take all this abundance away, he will curse you to your very face. That Job would curse God that's what Satan says that same ch that charge that's on all of us on all of mankind and so many of these people many of them because of the lukewarm teachings that tickles their ears they'll only be for Jesus as long as they are in abundance and comfort and happy but as soon as tribulation comes and there's problems a lot of them are gonna fall away that's the that's the uh, predicted falling away cooling off of the greater number the love of the love the greater number will cool off because many of them they're not really actually saved they are not really they're not really a part of the body of Christ 
I'm sorry. It's true. And so don't let that be you. There is a reason why the beast pays for these churches, these de facto churches. De facto simply means, in, with this application here, um, a doppelganger, a false, something that's false. Um, you know, you can get like the name brand cereal, then you can go buy the store brand, and it look identical, the actual product similar, but it's a totally different name brand. It's a de facto. It's not the real name brand, but it's trying to look like the name brand and you can get it easier. It's cheaper. So what's happening is these de facto churches are not real, real houses of God. They look like they're churches. They're really houses of the dead for the dead. There are corporations signed in with the corporations and, and the people who frequent these places, the majority of them, they haven't found salvation, eternal life. They are in the house of the dead with a dead, powerless gospel that removes them from the truth. And Jesus actually talks about these people. Um, the Holy Word of God condemns these people who, who scatter the flock and cause problems. And who hold back the truth from these people. And these people, they all they have to do is read the Bible. And when they go to these churches, they'd realize these churches don't teach the real gospel. They, they deserve what they're getting right here. The, the majority of them, not everybody. Um, not everybody. All you gotta do is actually read the word of God yourself. And you will know better. And you won't even, you won't be a part of this mess. You'll enter into the cramped and narrow path that leads into everlasting life, which few are finding. Okay? So, understand that if the world loves it, and the world's doing it, and the world's for it, and if the world's teaching it, it ain't the truth. World's teaching, once saved, always saved. That's because it's not the truth. It's the broad way that leads off into destruction. There, no, I'm telling you, once saved, always saved, that's, that's not even biblical. Now, I'll tell you what's going on with that a little bit. Now, this is, this is the reason why I'm doing this video. Let me grab the top of my marker, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's a reason why I'm even bringing all this up. Besides the fact that I just want to show you some important stuff that you should know for your benefit. So you'll have better discernment and start to see more of what's going on, what's been going on. This is one of Lucifer's tricks, how he's, he's usurping precious souls. But the majority of them, they're getting what they pay for. Entertainment, stuff that makes them feel good so they don't have to face their sin and work out that sin, get it out. It's important you have to get that out. Um, now, here's well, the church is having some problems. The, the body of Christ is having some problems because of Lucifer. There's confusion. Now, I want to talk to you about some of that. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to do a video series, part two of this video. I'm going to start talking about how there's a portion, a portion of the church that believes in <clears throat> once saved, always saved. And these are precious brothers and sisters. And then there's another portion of the church that says, nah, -uh. Uh -uh, that's not what the Word of God says. You can become a reprobate. There's over 40 scriptures discussing at length that just what a reprobate is, somebody who lost their salvation, who's unsavable. They've walked away from the Lord. You can lose your salvation. The Holy Scriptures talk about all kinds of stuff, about trembling in the blood of Jesus, how you can lose your salvation. You have to understand some things. There's some problems. There's some scriptures that these people the once saved, always saved, that they lean on to support their belief. But they're misunderstanding these scriptures, these scriptures that they're using. Like, for example, I have to pull it and type it, I'll put it like right here. They're talking, it, the particular scripture they're using, it's to the effect of how no one can snatch you out of the hands of the Lord. That applies to the bride, the bride of Christ, not the body of Christ, the baby, the harvest, the, the body. They don't understand. It's misunderstandings, big time. And a lot of them, they probably, because they've, if some of them, if they've read in the Bible about how 
we're to be working out our salvation with fear and trembling and how we're supposed to be overcomers. It's all over the Holy Scriptures about how we are supposed to be overcomers of sin. How Jesus himself says to the overcomers, I will give thee the everlasting tree of life. And the bride will be spot free, blemish free. Ah, she's an overcomer of sin because she's gotten rid of all that. She's worked out her salvation. She Now there's something that you have to understand. And I'll do it I'll do it in this video. There is a big 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 misunderstanding in between these two groups. There's the once saved always saved and the, the people who don't believe in that. There's two, there's a big misunderstanding. So I'm going to talk about that in the next video. This video is 40 something minutes long already. So you should catch that video. I'll be uploading that very soon. It'll be part 2 to this one, okay? All right. So thank you for joining me. You've been watching Witness for Yeshua Mashiach.